with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. God was not intending to create any being that had already existed. No two angels are the same. As touching creativity, God had created everything that was allocated to him as creator. When God created all things, he was pleased. He created spirits like himself. But the point came, he wanted to carry out another hypothesis. And he wanted to find out, is it possible for me to make myself? That was, that was when God began the project of man. Because God created angels, they are strange beings. Michael is a revelation of power. So when Michael comes to a place, even if he's not talking, the energy he brings to that place, the energy level will change. Because everything about Michael is power. If Michael enters this building now, before he introduces himself, all of us will be slain. He doesn't know how to speak for himself. The power goes ahead of him. If Michael lands in Abuja, many kings will die. Wicked kings. You know, you know, you know how Herod died? Herod died because a king entered the territory. <laughs> because everything about him is power. When Gabriel enters this place, you will just begin to know things. Because there's a realm where they don't talk. You know as you are known. He is a custodian of mysteries. So when he shows up, you will just know. If Gabriel walks past you, you will know. Because he's a custodian of mysteries. He's a being of mysteries. And you know, in the angelic realm, they carry their environment. When we leave church, you will leave your environment behind. Angels are not like that. When an angel is going, he carries his environment with him. <laughs> the spirit realm is a strange realm. <laughs> it's a strange realm. When the spirit is moving, it comes with its environment. That's what we call atmosphere. They carry the environment. So the environment of Gabriel is secrets and mysteries. So when it comes, you will know things. Most times when you function in the prophetic anointing, an angel, an angel in the order of Gabriel stood by you. And so you look at somebody, you just know what is in the person's heart. How did you know? You entered an atmosphere of a being. That's how they operate. They carry the environment. So God displayed enormous creativity when he fashioned the angels. When he wanted to create man, there was nothing external he could do anymore. The only thing he thought of was to make himself. I want to sit down and watch myself. And that is why the glory of man, unlike the angels, is not external. He had to hide the glory of man. Because if the angels see that glory, they will know. And they may begin to worship man. So he said, he has hid this treasure in earthen vessel. <laughs> so when he created man, because man was a representative of God, he didn't put the glory outside. Michael's glory is external. Gabriel's glory is external. But the glory of man is hid inside. And that's why Paul said, this is the mystery of the age. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So... <laughs> David was carried to heaven and he had angelic debate and some of the things David heard now brought David to a state of sobriety and David began to ask God what is man? It's not who is man because that question came from the angelic realm what is this being? We have seen everything you created but what is man? The reason is because when you want to define a man you can't define him after any order except God so the simplest way to define man is God in dust. The, different, the simplest way to define man is God concealed. So when God looks upon man and created man, God had to rest because I don't need to walk anymore. Because when man is walking, God is walking. The reason God rested on the seventh day is because God has completed the project of creating another God. And that's why he said, Ye are gods, because you are the children of the Most High. 
And when Jesus came, Jesus did not contradict David. He said, it is written, ye are gods, because you are the children of the Most High. If he say you are gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. You are gods. Why did you think God rested on the seventh day? Because if God is walking on the seventh day, it means two gods will be walking. If that is if that is preaching and another one is preaching, you'll be distracted now. So when one is preaching, the other one needs to rest. So the one in heaven was resting. So that the one on earth can walk. That one on earth is the one now functioning by the wisdom of God, by the purposes of God, and by the will of God. So that one on earth cannot walk unless it's in alignment with the one in heaven. This is why when Moses wanted to create the tabernacle, he said, don't build because you are creative. He said, make sure you build according to the patterns on the mount. Because your standard cannot be different from my standard. You are like unto me. The moment you step out of my realm, you will lose order. And the quality assurance in the spirit will contradict you. And when you are contradicted, it means your essence has been defied. Build according to the patterns that are revealed. So every time you are living your life and you tap into another wisdom, it was not an advantage. You actually declined in standard. You actually depreciated in quality because you were not supposed to look upon any other spirits to create because no other spirit is in the order of Elohim. Only man was created in the order of Elohim. So when man begins to converse with other spirits, what that man did was that he denatured. What that man did was that he goes down in class. When man wants to function, the only one man is permitted to look at is the one that dwells in the secret. Because that's the only one that is like him. That's the only one like him. When you consult a spirit, you, did, you, don't, you didn't know who you are. You went down, you declined. And that was why when the serpent came to the garden in Genesis chapter 3 and advised the man and the man obeyed, God came, God was shocked. What? You mean another spirit is giving you counsel? Are you not aware that you are superior to every other spirit? How can a spirit advise you? You are in the order of God. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. How could you go to subscribe to the wisdom of another spirit? The day you did that, what you did was that you made yourself a slave. You are no longer a God because the realm where I, I created you from, as a God, you have three designations. The first designation is that you are a son. You are a son. That's why you are a God. Because he that is born of God is a God. Number two, you are a king. That's why you can rule over the earth. But the day you obeyed another spirit, you have activated another spiritual law because whoever you yield yourself, servants to obey, the servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed. So what you did was that you handed over your scepter as a king to another spirit. The realm where you live, another spirit will rule you. I brought you into that realm to rule that realm. How come you handed your scepter away? You didn't know that you were a god. And the third thing you did is that you lost the authority of priesthood. The reason you have access to me is because you are a priest. And as a priest, your goal is to have intimacy and intercourse with me. So the Bible said in Genesis 3 now, in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. The goal was intimacy. But the door to the presence had been shut. So a cherubim came and drove him out of the, way, out of the garden. So the man ceased being a son. He ceased being a king. And he ceased being a priest. And the moment he lost those three things, he was no longer a god. He became a man of man. A man after the flesh. A man created from dust that will return to dust. That was the undoing of man. The day he did that, he was disconnected from the immortal realm. He became a mortal being. That was why death could now rule over him. The realm the man was operating from before, he was a ruler even over death. But many things captured him. Even time captured him. And so long as the man is in time, he will die. Time is a captor of man. But when our full essence is actualized, even time can no longer hold us captive. That was where Enoch went. 
And when he entered there, he knew that man could walk out of time. And Enoch walked and said, God will take me. I have graduated from this realm. God will carry me. People thought, carry you where? The only way we know men can escape time is by the sting of death. Enoch said, no, there's another way. Because before the man fell, there was a door out of time. I have found that door. And true to his word, one day, Enoch, the Bible said, he walked with God and was not. And Enoch was not the only person. Elijah came and said, hey, hey, Enoch, stop. I know there is something you saw in the spirit and he found it and the day came. Elijah said, I found the door that Enoch found. Many people in the body of Christ will find it at the end of time. But there are certain men that have found it today. And Elijah said, I know where that door is. And he journeyed out of Jericho. He journeyed out of four nations and he came to Jordan because he has found that key. There was nothing in nature that could stop him. The Jordan that God parted for four million people. Elijah came, removed his shirt, struck and he parted and he walked through the Jordan. That was not the testimony. When he came to that spot, he said, what do you want? I'm about to leave time. I'm about to leave time. What do you want? Elijah said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Ah. Meanwhile, what Elijah is asking for is for air too. But it is that's difficult. But if you see me as I'm carried, you have it. And suddenly, a chariot of fire came and the whirlwind took him out of time. When what God wants to achieve is actualized, it will not just be a story of Enoch and Elijah. All of us will be like that. The day will come when you can't be trapped by anything. Sickness can't trap you. Because the demon that governs sickness, when that demon comes, you say, hey, I'm a son. I'm a son. I rule over your realm. I rule over your land. In the name of Jesus, get out. And cancer goes. And you say, what's going on? You have begun to rule in the demonic realm. A day comes when you touch things. It looks as if they are not working. You say, hey, 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 I'm a son. Everything we do prospers. We don't pray for things to prosper. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Why? For whoever is born of God, overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Even our faith, even our faith, I am born of God. Abuja cannot swallow me. No, 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 no. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. If I step into a city, the door of the city will open to me because I am a son. I don't need to fast for it to happen. When I fast, I'm just loving God. But when I decree, even nature obeys. Do you see why as beautiful as healing service is, it's still a sign that we are behind. Because a day will come when you will not need healing service. No. You will not need healing service. You will find out who is the demon that controls sickness. Come here. Get out. How dare you. Marakapatoka. Rakiba dark. Marondo parata. Out. And the demon moves. You, you are doing something. It doesn't work. You say, what? How can it not work? My hands are blessed. I am a co-creator with Christ. He said, whoever is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. He said, we are joint heirs with Christ. So we are co-heirs of God. I'm a joint heir of God. How can a God do something and it doesn't work? In the name of Jesus, I command this business begin to work begin to work and then you will know that they can speak to businesses and they will work. It's a realm. It's a realm. It's a realm. Ministry is not working. No, not mine. Not mine. Not mine. Thank you everybody for coming but go home. I want to change things. You know there is a studio in the spirit where God recreates because when man failed the Bible said God went back. He went back. There was a place where God sat and the father spoke to the spirit. The spirit spoke to the world. When God said, let us make man, it was a spiritual studio. When things are not working, leave everybody. Go back there. 
when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are not just speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. You are ascending in the Spirit. Rakabata. And a point come, you appear somewhere and then you command your business, you command your ministry, begin to walk and he has no choice. He has no choice. When men pray, it's not a religious activity. John was speaking. He said, I, John, I was in the eye called Patmos on the day of the Lord and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a sound as of a trumpet because prayer is a progression and suddenly he said he saw the son of man and he said I am Alpha and Omega do you know what happened to John that was not introduction spiritual dimensions are trapped in names so when he said Alpha Omega he was activating a dimension because Alpha Omega means beginning end that was why John was the apostle that said that which was from the beginning. And John the apostle was the only person that could write the end of time. And he said at the end, amen. The reason is because when he prayed, he entered into Alpha Omega. So he could see the beginning, he could see the end. There is a place God stand, stood where he commanded the earth to bring forth her increase. When you press there, you can command your business. It will begin to work. There was a place where God stood and he said, Lazarus, come forth. If you enter there, anything that have died, you can call it back to life. Be it business, be it ministry, whatsoever it is. Because in the economy of God, the goal is for us to come into God and to live as God. Why is revival necessary? Because many times we stop functioning like God we begin to function like men. And when we begin to function like men, we are no longer keeping pace with the Holy Ghost. And so somebody is hoping that he will be favored. No, we don't hope to be favored. We are the favor. We are the favor. Somebody say, where is favor? I am favor. I am favor. I'm the one. I'm not praying for favor. I am favor. There is a fragrance that I carry. It emits favor. When I come, you will like me. We don't beg to be liked. You will like me. Yes. I know. Daddy was speaking. He said, there is a realm of knowledge that when you enter, you don't need to pray for things. There's a realm. There's a realm you enter. You don't say the power of God is here. I came, the power has come. The power has come. You know why? The Holy Ghost you carry is like the four priests that carry the ark. Anywhere they come, the ark has come. And if I came with the Holy Ghost, which power are you looking for? The power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells here in me. So I don't need a feeling for miracle service. I can wake up in the morning, I pray for the sick, they are healed. I can be in the service, I pray for the sick, they are healed. Any day, any time. Because I know, I know, I know. This is what the apostles knew. John the apostle was speaking. He said, you are of God, little children. You are of God. He didn't say you are from God. He said you are of. It means you are of the substance of God. When a man touches you, he touches God. He touches God. You are of, of God. And when Paul was speaking in Ephesians 2.10, he said, you were created in Christ Jesus unto every good works. What it means is that the raw material for creating the new man is not dust. It was Adam that was created from the dust. I'm not created from the dust. I am created from Christ. The raw material for my creation is Christ. You didn't come from the dust. It was Adam that came from the dust. You came from Christ and you are of God. How can you fail? If I touch you, I know you are blessed. I know. I know. I know. You are of God. You are of God. And then somebody is moving somewhere. They say he's afraid. This thing may not work. What? 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 What will not work? When we know this, a lot of things we see in the body of Christ. Come and touch my shoe and be blessed. Which shoe? I'm blessed. I am blessed. Give and be blessed. What? I am blessed. 
I am the blessing. I am the blessing. I am the blessing. If you do this, this will happen to you. Happen. Things don't happen to us. We make things happen. We make things happen. We make things happen. Mare Gavako. Bareti Atatoa. Manteki Baradoske. Belolada. Mariano Suva Ate. Listen. Listen. This is not psyching. This is the code of creation. This is how you were created. God created you like himself. That's why when God came into the world, the Bible said the earth was dark. Everywhere was void. The Hebrew word is tohu, bohu. Emptiness, vacuum, and nothingness. God didn't go laboring. The Bible said the spirit of God was hovering on the face of the deep. And a point came, God said, light appear. And the light appeared. The Lord said, let the dry ground be separated. Do you know how men walk? Men walk by laboring. Do you know how God walk? When God's walk, they talk. That's why we speak in tongues. That's why we speak in tongues. When you are speaking in tongues, you are creating a spiritual radar. A radar. When the radar becomes large enough, then you begin to command. You will be amazed. You will be amazed. A mountain can move. Jesus didn't say, go and dig out the mountain. He said, say to this mountain. Say to this mountain. Say to this mountain. But when men don't know that they are gods, they use their tongue for gossip. Do you see what, did you hear what Sandra did? Can you imagine what Sandra did? No, gods don't talk like that. It's men that talk like that. Even if Sandra fell, I will go to my closet and say, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Sandra is, for, is rising from that pit. She will not remain there because she is of God. And so every force that withstood her, we cancel it and we bring her out because gods make men. They don't destroy men. We don't destroy men. We make men. That's who you are. This is why we need revival because there is a need for transition. The body of Christ has not transited. There are six realms of life. The first realm of life is the realm of the animal life. The animal life, please sit down. The animal life is operated by blood. So in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, it said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. When you function at the level of the animal life, you will function by feelings. So when you are afraid, you say things will not work. That's a realm. If revival doesn't come, many will remain at the level of the animal life. Living by fear. Living by feelings. And so today their life is up. Tomorrow it is down. They move by the things they see. It's animal life. It is regulated by blood. But God doesn't want you to be there. When man fell, he fell to the animal life. It's, an, it's a realm. The animal life. But God doesn't want you to be there. When you walk with God, you will migrate back to the soulish life. Because the first man God created was at the realm of the soulish life. That's why I said God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into the man and the man became a living soul. The soulish life functioned by breath. As beautiful as that life is, it's still not enough. It's not enough to live by your blood. It's not enough to live by your breath. There is another realm of life. That realm is called Zoe. That realm of life doesn't function by blood. It doesn't function by breath. It functions by the word of God. That's why when you receive the word, you receive life. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. It's for the Zoe life. When you enter the economy of the Zoe life, you become like the God that you serve. Now, the Zoe life has different cadres. The first cadre of the Zoe life is the grace cadre. That's where God empowers you because of his love and his mercy. Now, when you begin to explore the way, which is what the outpouring of the Spirit does, because in the body of Christ today, there are many people living by the animal life. So somebody says, hey, sorry, I couldn't come to church because I was feeling headache. I couldn't go for evangelism because I was weak. They live by feelings. The guy goes to work, 
And then because they ganged up against him, he starts crying, I'm finished. No. Gods don't know how to finish. How can I be finished? The day we are finished, this world will end. That's what happens at the rapture. When we live here, the world ends. We are the sort of the earth. We preserve this world. That office, you are the safety of that office. <laughs> if you live there, they are in trouble. <laughs> if you know certain things, see, your life will naturally emit energy. 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 You will just know. Even when you go to sleep, you know that God is conscious of you. You know that God is with you. You just know. Nothing satisfies like knowing. You just wake up, you say, thank you, Father. You are with me. I traveled to Ghana. We were going for a meeting. I just landed. I had to go for the meeting. And the lorry ran into us. And they were shouting. I said, peace be still. He was in the car. When the pastor came out, he said, how could you keep your calm? I said, I know. I know. I know God is with me. I know. It's not a message I preach. I know. I know. That's why I love Noella's song. You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. You are, who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Your mind is full. So when you want to know what saturates God's mind, it's Apostle Michael. God is obsessed with me. He thinks of me every morning. How can I be perturbed? I went to work. My boss didn't greet me. And I came back and said, can you imagine? They didn't greet me. Glory to God! I'm bigger than the world. Who cares? Some people, their neighbors don't smile. They are in trouble. And because your neighbor keeps malice, you too join your neighbor in malice. He doesn't want to greet you. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Today is a great day. My joy is full. You don't regulate me. I'm a God. Don't regulate me. You wake up in the morning, your wife is frowning her face. And you now say, what does she think? She's frowning her face. When she's going out with that frown, her guy from the back, turn around three times. I'm too loaded to be offloaded by a frown. We don't live at the feeling level. I'm not powered by blood. I'm not powered by breath. I'm powered by the word of God. And so long as the word of God abides forever, I'm full of joy. I'm full of assurance. I'm full of hope. I know things are working. I don't need a prophet to tell me. If a prophet does, that's confirmation. But if there's no prophet to say, I am the first prophet over my life. This is how we function. But the body of Christ, sadly, have not migrated. Many are still at the level of feelings. Many are still at the level of breath. It's a body. Come to the level of the way. Where nothing moves you. Where nothing moves you. You know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the called. According. According. Listen. listen they are, these are not. When God speaks, he's not being a poet. He's showing you the foundations of reality. These things cannot fail. He said heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot of my word. Not one. I don't speak because I feel like. When I speak, there are laws. There are laws. Come to the Zoe level. And when you reach there, then you begin to migrate. This is where revi revival comes in. Because the first level of Zoe is when you begin to receive the word of God. The second level of Zoe is not just about the word of God anymore. You begin to participate in the realm of God. You come into the fellowship of the divine. The fellowship of the divine. At that level, your life is regulated by laws. Now, when you come to church or you look around society today and morality is declining, it's because the body of Christ is not transiting. So instead of joining from the world operation to the realm operation, we are going back to the feeling operation. 
So the world is doing things the way they feel like doing it. We don't do things because of the way we feel like. There is a law that regulates us. It said the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. So when you come into life, you move from just receiving grace. You step into the realm of law. The law of the spirit of life. That's when you no longer live based on what you desire. You are bound by the spirit. It's what the spirit desires that you do. And the beautiful thing about this realm is that when you get here, oh man, you don't function by an anointing. You don't function by a gift. The first thing that happens to you is that God gives you the glory as a token. There is a difference between functioning by a gift and functioning by the glory. A gift is a charisma of the spirit that he expresses through your life. So when you know how that gift functions, that charisma will flow. If you meditate, the prophetic will flow. It's a natural thing. When you service that gift, it functions. That's why there are many people today fornicating, still prophesying. Because they know the law of that charisma. When they are in solitude for a while, they can flow that fragrance. It's a charisma. It's the way the Holy Ghost wants to display. And many times, the expectation of the people provokes the gift. So even when the man is not accurate with God, when the people are expectant, the gift can flow. But when you enter the realm of the glory, you are not functioning by a gift. It becomes an entrustment. Faith is when you can receive from God. But faithfulness is, faith is when you can trust in God. Faithfulness is when God can trust in you. God will only trust in a man that operates in the realm of the laws of God. At that realm, the man functions by a glory. So there are certain men that when they are prophesying, people are convicted of sin. The reason is because it's not just a gift at work. It's a government that came there. It's a government. So while they are yet prophesying, the Holy Ghost is searching for people who are not accurate. And the Holy Ghost is working on their heart. There are certain men that when they are singing, demons are leaving. They are not saying demons, get out. They are just worshipping. But because they are worshipping, they create a radar in the spirit. And that place becomes a portal. So demons begin to check out. Because government is coming. Angelic entourage begins to come. Dimensions of heaven begins to appear. Because the glory is a token. Those are the kind of men that things around them can't fail. Your business can be failing until you invite them. The moment they become a part of it, it begins to work. And you say, what is going on? No, they have entered another realm of life. The realm of life where they function is a realm of the glory. But because that realm is the realm of the glory, it is governed by laws. Because there are many things you can't do. Because the glory comes with the jealousy of God. You know, when Moses was functioning in that realm, the Bible said Moses wished not that his face shone. The face of Moses shone. But Moses was brought under a rigid law. And when Moses violated God, God told him, I won't forgive you. A man who is functioning at the level of grace, I can forgive him. But you, I gave you my glory as an entrustment. You violate me, you will not see the promised land. Moses entreated the Lord and he said, don't pray to me. And God commanded Moses in Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 and 10. He said, go to the mountain Nebo in the midst of the mountains of Abarim and die there. You know what? That man is not carrying a gift. He is the gift. He has come into an ascended reality. That's why even when Moses died, the devil came fighting over his body. They wanted to keep his body in the museum of hell so that they can boast of a measure of glory. But even the body of Moses, angels came to seize it. Because at that level, everything about him is celestial. It's a dimension in the spirit. The body of Christ needs to transit from where we are. There are many battles that is facing the body. We cannot fight it just by prophesying. There are many conditions and circumstances that the body of Christ is being hedged into that we will no longer contend just by talking. We need to reveal the glory to our generation. And when our generation sees it, the sons of the born woman will go back. The strategies of hell will fail on their own accord. We have come into the place where the battle of the last day have been activated. Men must transit to the realm of gods. If we must survive, if we must rule this world, if we must bring the government of heaven 
to the face of the earth, then we must step into the glory realm. The realm where we are no longer limited by the forces that hold men's way. But the only time we can function there is when our life becomes regulated. This is why the devil may not stop the prayer meeting. But the devil will make you compromise every day. Because he knows that the prayer meeting can serve his grace. But the prayer meeting cannot service the realm of laws. The realm of laws, only obedience services it. So even if you do your vigil, so long as you can compromise the next day, no problem. He can still rule over you. If we don't want to be overrun by the darkness of the world, then we must come into that realm. The crisis of the church in Turkey is that they knew grace. They didn't know law. They didn't know law. They knew the doctrine of Paul, but they didn't know the life of Paul. And they carried the doctrine of grace without the life of government, without the life of obedience. And a point came, that church was overrun. The body of Christ must wake up to a point where we call a spade a spade. We will tell the sinner, you have sinned and you must repent. We will no longer sugarcoat our gospel, but we will tell men that there is a God that is called a consuming fire. Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we command men to repent. There is a place where we must get to that we don't take honorarium from men just because they brought money. We need to find out the quality and the texture of their life. Where is their stand in the spirit? We must come to a point where we are no longer moved by the excellence, by the voice, by the texture of what we do, but by the quality of witness that comes out of it. Thank God because we have advanced in certain areas, but we must advance as well in the spirit. Where men tremble at the presence of God because they have known the ways of the laws of God. They have known the oracles of his spirit. They have known that God is not only a God of mercy and a God of love, that God is also a consuming fire. And for a generation to bring witness to him, there is a place that generation must get to, where that generation functions by perfect obedience and the fear of the law. When Jesus appeared, the Bible said, out of the root of Jesse, a, a root is plucked out, and they say, upon him is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel. But when he rounded up, said the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord must visit the church again. The fear of the Lord must come to the church again. Where men are not only excited in the presence, but men also tremble in the presence. Because God is not only father, he is also a judge. As a father, he extends a hands of love. But as a judge, he brings government. He brings judgment. He brings a rod that chastises. And if we don't want to bear the testimony of bastards, then we must come under the government of Elohim. There is a place where the, body, the Lord summons the body of Christ to. Because we don't want to teach it and we don't want to emphasize it, there will be a revival. A revival that will restore the fear of the Lord. You know, they were teaching the grace of God until suddenly, Ananias came to church and he sold a piece of land. And he lied to Peter. And Peter said, why have Satan entered your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? And he fell down and died. Suddenly they discover that it's not only excitement that is in the presence of God. There's also a trembling requirement for a man to function in the presence of God. They didn't stop there. Three hours later, when the wife came, he said, did you sell the land for such and so? And he said, yes, we did. And he said, the feet of them that carried thy husband, they are waiting for you at the door. And she also fell down and died. The day where fornicators lead praise and worship is over. The day where liars come to the altar to lie and to exaggerate is over. The day where swindlers come in, in sheep clothing but within a ravenous wolf are over. Because when the revival come, there will be a transition. And the transition will be a summon to the realm of the fear of the Lord. Where the government of God appears as a consuming fire. If that dimension doesn't come, we will not have power to challenge the sons of the bond woman. We will not have power to bring territorial order and to shape things in the territory. Where we have praise and worship conferences, prayer meetings, and the principalities will laugh because they know that after praying in tongues in capital letters, when we go back to the office tomorrow, we will still compromise. And so long as we compromise, we are their servants. 
Because whomever you yield yourself servant to obey, the servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed, the day has come where men will no longer just dress with suit and come to sit in church, but their hearts will be tidy before the Lord. Men that know how to say no to the world. There are three battles we fight for us to transit to that realm. The first is the battle of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, it said the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. When you want to act, transit, your flesh will come to pose a negation. But you must, like Paul, beat your body and bring it under subjection. You must beat your body. That era has come where men will tell themselves, enough is enough. I am not a liar. I am not a fornicator. I'm not a thief. I don't only come to God for what God has to offer. There is a place in God that the body of Christ is transiting to and I must be there. When the road is called, I will be there. I will not preach the gospel and myself be called a castaway. I will not enjoy the bounties of God on earth and be denied the bounties of God in eternity. I must stand where righteous men stand at the end of time. That's the era we are going to. We are not keeping pace with the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of glory that the Holy Ghost wants to bring upon the face of the earth. But men don't have stamina to wield them. The flesh have made a slave of us. So men who are gods are falling like men. Because they have given room to the flesh. But we will not let flesh bury us from the resources of the spirit. Men will come to a point tonight and they will tell themselves, if Paul was able to walk in holiness, I will walk in holiness. Because the same spirit that Paul has is what I carry. Many will tell themselves, if Daniel was able to do politics with purity, even in highest level, I will also walk the, the political corridor without blemish. Men will come to a point where they will tell themselves, if there were merchants like Joseph that walked in righteousness and the fear of the Lord, even if I'm in the oil industry, I will be righteous. Because there is a place where sons gather. There is a place where warriors are summoned. A place where people are not just blessed. A place where people become a testimony to their generation. Because for us to function as gods, we must win the battle of the flesh. There is no God that is ruled by his feeling. We must win the war over the flesh. That's why I said, out of Zion, saviors shall arise. And they will judge the mountains of Esau. The judgment is not condemnation. The judgment is to show them the pathways of righteousness. Not because they preach it, but because they live it. And he said, Noah feared God. On the strength of Noah's reverence for God, he was called righteous. And Noah became the reason why his generation was judged. If the sons of the born woman be judged, will be judged for their iniquity. It's not because we'll come to church and say, God, kill them. Our righteousness will become a proof that their iniquity can no longer be tolerated. The body of Christ will come to a place of blazing holiness and men will carry righteousness as a seal in the spirit. We have come to that era where messages will not only excite men, but messages will remind men that they are not mortals and they cannot live like mortals. Messages will remind men that the ground of compromise is a grave that will bury their purposes in God. Messages will remind men that there is a judgment that is to come at the end of time. That we are just pilgrims on the face of the earth. And when we walk past this world, there is another realm that we will enter. And that realm is a realm of thrones. Where we enter into the full regalia of our priesthood and our kingship. But the strength of that judgment is on the purity and the testimony of our witnesses. And so we will walk this world like Paul. We will beat our bodies and bring them under subjection. The second battle we will fight in the last day is the battle against the world system. Because we have let down the guard of the flesh, we are beginning to import things from the world. The same error of Adam is what we are doing now. Most of our worship songs and praise songs, the beats are from the clubs. Meanwhile, encoded in our spirit are sounds of eternity. Where are the men and the women like Fanny Crosby that can enter into heaven and download the hymn from the throne room and even after a thousand years, 
the hymn will still be fresh. Because those vibrations came from Zion. Where are those men? That era has come again. Where men will connect to the string of the spirit and find the frequency of God. The time has come where men will journey to Horeb and look upon the bush burning that is not consumed. And when they sing a song, their song will become a purging furnace for a generation. A time will come where messages will not just be a function of exegesis, but men will find the streams of witness that flow from heaven. And when a man talks, his voice will become like an echo of eternity. When you hear him, you may not understand the exegesis, but you will know that these echoes, my spirit know them. Because you have heard the voice of God even when you were sculpted in the studio of eternity. Our mingling with the world system must be truncated. Because when we allow the world to come into the church, we become blinded. And when we become blinded, another prince will be enthroned. He said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We can become blinded. Church is not just a place of fun. Church is a gate where legislations take place. The texture of a civilization is supposed to be defined from the church. We should define what happens in government. We should define what happens in the academics. We should define what happens in business. But we have lost scepters. Too many warriors transited and men were not worthy to take their scepters. So there are vacuums in the spirit. When the revival comes, men will be purged again. And they will be able to hold on to hallowed weapons and scepters that patriarchs of old that brought witness to their generation wielded. So they will walk in the same order of power. If Moses alone was able to bring down Egypt, then you don't need a quorum to take a city. If Philip alone, alone was able to take Samaria, then you don't need 10 intercessors to take Samaria. There's a place for intercession, but there are men that have rank in the spirit. And then we will go back through intimacy and find out what are the scepters that these men wielded. We will lay hands on them again. The Bible said in Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 4, it said that mountain is like the ear of David. There, it said, are armors of many warriors. There are many scepters that warriors have kept in the spirit, but there are no men who can wield them because we have allowed the world system to influence us. You see, I've seen an abomination upon the face of the earth that priests are trekking. Why beggars are riding on horses? Those abominations come because we violate covenants. We violate laws. We allow the world to influence us too deep that we no longer have a standing in the spirit. The third battle we will fight is the battle against the deception of the spirits of this age. The devil is a seductive spirit. The whispers of the devil is called nakash. It's like the whispers of a serpent. It comes and it lays us. Lay us men from their stronghold. We must come to a point where we discern the voice of the devil. And in, no, in whichever guise he comes, we will tell him that we have no price. The reason is because we have become lively stones. You can't negotiate with us. There is no basis for negotiation. Whatever the devil comes with, there will be no ground for negotiation. We have become stones that God himself erects in Zion as a witness. The battle of flesh, the battle of the world, and the battle against the princes of the age, we will win those battles. And when we do, we will be restored to our throne and we will begin to function like gods. Like gods. Because ye are gods. Ye are gods. Because ye are the children of the Most High God. Your name on earth may be Nathaniel. But when you enter the spirit realm and they show you your name, you'll be amazed that your name may be called warrior. Your name may be called mighty man of valor. Your name on earth may be called Abigail. But when you go to Zion, you'll be shocked that your name may be the sweet psalmist of Israel. So God is looking up to you to bring sounds to the earth realm. The earth is void of sounds. It's been long that men brought sounds that altered the civilization of this world. God needs fresh sounds to come. How come you have been singing for many years and all you have are invitations? 
How come you have been singing for many years? The Bible spoke of David. David had warriors that he formed, not by military training, but with harps. Because when David sang, the sounds of David brought dimensions of heaven. The reason is because spirits move on sound. When the Holy Ghost came, he came on a sound. On the last day, when Jesus descend, he will descend with a shout. David knew the technology of sound, that it was not just about a good song, that sounds are vehicles in the spirit. So when 400 broken and battered men came to him, he didn't bother to enroll them in a military school. All he did was to strike strings. And as David struck those strings, suddenly the men began to change. And the Bible said, Eliezer, the son of Dodo, he took a spear. He slew 800 men. The word Eliezer is a spear. That means David altered his molecular structure until he became like his weapon. And when the guy goes out and is fighting, him and his spear become one. The Bible said he fought until his hands were cleave to the spear. He couldn't open it because when he was fighting, he was actually not fighting with men. He was having intimacy with his weapon because he had become a warrior in the spirit. There are sounds that will come to the body of Christ. Warriors, worshippers will rise that when they sing, they will herald revival in territories. Sounds will go first before the world come. Men will rise that when they sing, gifts of the spirit will be activated. You will come to, a church, to church service. You have a project that you don't know what to do. And suddenly, Sister A begins to worship. And as she is worshiping, the heavens open to you. And then angels begin to teach you the algorithm of the business that you are trying to activate. No preacher came to pray, but this person has known how to open the heavens. You will know what a blessing truly is. Because anytime that person comes, you are ready to begin to learn business. You will no longer just have managerial certificates from Lagos Business School. Somebody else will be giving you present hour revelation that the professors of Harvard cannot give you. Because when that person sings, the angels of commerce enter the building. You will, sometimes you will beg them to come and do vigils with you. Because worship is not just a good song. It's a strategy in the spirit. It's a strategy. There are men that will just come and when they start praying, warring angels will begin to come. And as they are praying, kapato warakataka, da 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 da, you just notice that suddenly you were tired. Strength came. After a while, the person is praying. You notice you can't sit down. You stand up. The person is praying. After a while, you start walking. What is going on here? After a while, you start running. You are trying to hold yourself back because you are, but you can't. An angel is touching you. You will now discover that that man's voice is an activator of warriors. So every time that man comes to church to pray, his goal is not just to leave prayer for 10 minutes. It's 10 minutes rehearsals in the spirit. And when that man is praying, he's teaching warriors. David said, the Lord taught my hands to fight and my fingers to war. He said, by my God, I ran through a troop. I leaped over a war. They were strategies of the spirit. That is the word that the church must conquer. That is the dimension the church must become. Nobody among us is weak. The reason is because God doesn't use our fleshly strength. God uses his own energy that he puts on our inside. And when we begin to align with the Holy Spirit, there is something that power does. The word is elutero. He said the law of the spirit of life has eluteroed me from the law of sin and death. The word elutero is the power to make, to deliver. So when that ability comes upon a man, you can be weak and vulnerable. But when you know the frequency that you're walking, every time you activate it, the strength of God will come upon you. I read the story of Catherine Kuhlman. Every time she's about to go for a healing service, she paces the floor for 18 hours. 18 hours. That is six hours short of a whole day. What strength is that? Is the strength of an ox. The reason is because she knew how to ascend to the spirit. There are many people that do business because there are things they look at in the spirit. Do you know? Nothing about you is natural. Even your words are not natural. Nothing about you is natural. But when will you activate your immortal dimension? When will you activate your supernatural dimension? The angels that were sent to walk with you in your dispensation, they have been waiting. And many times, you wake up in the morning, you feel like fasting. You feel like fasting because that angel is 
calling forth, but you don't align. He said, when will you wear your garment of a warrior? Come on, Peter. I want to show you great and mighty thing. Why won't you align? You feel like fasting, and after one day, you kill it, and then you go back again. When revival comes, warriors will rise. Warriors will rise. Warriors will rise. Those things you call disadvantages, those are the first places God will alight upon. Because every time God comes, the way he showcases his excellency is to begin with your disadvantage. So that yourself will never take the credit. So he came to Moses. Moses was a stammerer. He said, go and speak for me. When I choose you, you will know that even the mouth was created by me. And in the latter days of Moses' life, he said Moses was mighty in wars and in deeds. How did the stamina become mighty in war? Because he tapped into another frequency. He tapped into the economy of the divine. I came to tell you tonight that a revival is coming. And that revival has no regard for your insufficiencies. That revival has no regard for your inefficacies. Because that point of weakness is the doorway of admission for you. The things you call a disadvantage are the pointers from whence you will be summoned. There are many warriors that have been called. There are many mighty men that have been called. There are many captains that have been called. Look not at your disadvantage. Turn to the Lord. He said they looked up to him and they were radiant. Their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. A time has come for a generation to look up to him that dwells in light. A place when we gaze, we cannot be ashamed. We cannot be ashamed. Hey, 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 hey. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. in here. There's about to be an outpouring here. The first set of people God is touching is about to give them stamina on the altar. <laughs> the first layer of the outpouring is about to begin. Ushers, if we have ushers here, it's your time. There are certain people God wants to recruit now. You have looked at your weaknesses for too long. You have fallen and risen for too long. There is a hand that is about to come upon you because a recruitment campaign is about to begin. Holy Ghost! Oh. Let's become. Welcome to Nakazu Watch TV. On Nakazu Watch TV, we are a great team and we work on life transforming messages that will bring you into realms of divine encounter with the world of truth. Please don't forget to subscribe 
like and share our videos. God bless you.